Here we go. With Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Text to get right into it. And as you know already from yesterday and the day before, this is pretty challenging stuff in its own kind of way. But we are doing it. After we do it. So at this point, uh, we have the men of Sodom surrounding Lot's house, uh, telling him to bring out the, uh, the uh, two strangers, two visitors that he has. And um, he appeals to them, and they have a, a sarcastic way of talking about him and basically saying, get out of the way. So, uh, and that they they try to break down the the door of the house. So it says the the men stretched out their hands. and they brought Lot alehem back to them in the house. and they closed the door. They shut the door. So let's take a look. See what we have here in Rashi. Okay, again, I'm going to check and make sure you are please muted if you want. No, don't have any. Don't. I guess we don't have any Rashi on this. Okay. The Eta Anashim Asher Petach Habayit, and as for the people who were at the entrance of the house. Hiku Verim, they hit with blindness. Mikaton from young Vaadgadol to old, from small to old. Vayilulim Patav, and they tried hard, they were unable to find the door. They wore themselves out trying to find the door. Petach, hu hachalal. So this opening is the opening shebo nichnasim v'yotzim, from through which they go in, they enter, and they go out. The san ve'rim. It's not a common word. Rashi tells us makat ivron, ivaron, meaning the the plague or the illness of blindness, blindness. Mikaton ve'adgado, from the small to the great. Could you not see it before? Okay, hopefully you could. All right. Um, so the Rashi point, you know, is uh, wants to point this out. It seems like a strange detail to to mention. It certainly could have put it in a different way. The haktanim hitchilu ba'avera. He says the little ones, in other words, the the minors or the young people, began. The sin they began with the sin tchila to begin with, shinemar minar vaatzaken because when it described the people gathering around the house, it says from young to old, lefichach hitchilo hapuranut mehem, and for this reason, the punishment began with them. Sort of interesting uh, how young people can get carried away. Uh, with certain kinds of emotional reactions and behaviors. So nothing, nothing has changed. And the men said to Lot, Who else do you have here? Chatan, son-in-law, Uvanecha, and your and son and sons, Uvnotecha, and your daughters. Here, and anyone who is with you in the city, who is belongs to you in the city, would say makom, get them out of this place. So, od who else do you have here? Shuto shel mikra. So the simple meaning of this verse is milacha od bayer hazot. Who else do you have in this town? Chutz besides your wife, 
uvenotecha shebabayit, and your daughters who are in the house. But it's also an idiom, and we'll see. Okay, well, let's keep going. He's still explaining this on the basis of the pshat, the simple meaning. Chatan, your son-in-law, son uvanecha, your sons, uvenotecha, and your daughters. Im yesh lecha chatan, if you have a son-in-law, or banim, or sons, uvanot, or daughters, get them out of this place. Uvanecha, what about sons? They weren't ever mentioned. So he says, the sons that are being referred to here are the sons of your daughters, Hanisuot, who were married. So we do see that he had these two daughters who were never married and other daughters who apparently were married and had children. So that's that's the simple basic meaning. Umidrash ad agada, but there's also a midrashic take on this verse. Uh, od meach uh, od. There is, I think, the od belongs to midrash ad agada. Meachar sheosin nevela kazot. Okay, since they are these people who are surrounding the house and the people of Sodom are performing such obscenity. Milacha pitchon peh. When it says milacha po, the idea is maybe milacha peh, right? The peh and po are spelled the same way. So, how do you have milacha? How do you have pitchon peh, meaning an excuse, uh, uh, an argument, lelamed sanigori alehim, to to teach, uh, to defend them, is what it means. How you look and see what obscenity these people perform? How 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 can you possibly have anything to say in their defense? Shekol halayla, because and the reason why is that throughout the night hayam melitz alehem tovot. He would try that is a lot would try and speak well of them. He'd try to suggest ways to defend their behavior. Uh, by saying possibly there were other good things that they did. Kari bay milachapo. And for this reason, we say, we understand this phrase, milachapo, or milachape, right? There's no vocalization in the actual Torah itself, right? How is it possible for you to excuse this behavior? Again, you know, what is the Torah trying to teach us here, right? Ki mashchitim anachnu, for we will destroy et hamakom hazeh, this place. Ki gadlat sakatam epne Adonai, for the cry, their cry, has gone out. The great has been their cry out before in God's presence meaning the cry of those people suffering at their hands, and they've had no other recourse but to cry out to God to save them. And and these and these people, these Sodomites, have just continued their obscene behavior. And the Lord Hashem has sent us to destroy it, to destroy it, to do, destroy the city. No Rashi on that one. Vayetze Lot, and Lot went out. Vaydaber el Chatanav, and he he went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, Lokhe Bonav, who had married his daughters. Vayomer, and he said to them, Kumu, get up, arise. Su minamakom hazeh, get out of this place. Ki mashchit adoshem Et ha'ir, because Hashem is going to destroy the city. But it appeared as if he was jesting in his sons-in-law's eyes. In other words, they just thought he was kidding around. And he was like a joker, mitzachek. Chatanav, his sons-in-law. Shnei benot nesuot hayu lo ba'ir. He had two married with uh, daughters in the city. So 
And, and the reason is because it's plural. And generally, if we don't see an actual number associated with the with the with the noun with the plural noun, we figure that it's the smallest plurality, which is two. So that's why we say he had two daughters because it doesn't mention the number. Okay, lochebno natav who had taken his daughters, but that is a um, a way of saying married, right? Sheotan shebabayit because the ones who were in his house that we had mentioned before harusot. Lahem. Okay. They were uh, engaged to them. So this is interesting because this is a case of where I had read it a number of times in one way. And now I am. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. No, I mean, this means that they're actually married. Okay. But this is referring now, because it says lochei benotav, he's understanding that as not actually married, but the um, that he had four daughters. This is the way I would want to understand it. And he was, um, those daughters were betrothed, the arusot would be betrothed to them, to these particular people, to these particular men. Okay, so... Onwards. Uchamo hashachar, and as early morning drew, Allah, Allah hashachar, Allah, kamo hashachar, Allah, and as the early morning uh, arose, vaya itzu hamalchim. So all night they were discussing this stuff, and dawn is starting to break. Vaya itzu hamalachim, and the angels pressed the lot lemor. Lot saying they were urging him, they were press pressuring him, saying, Kum, arise, kach et ishtacha, take your wife, ve and your two daughters, Hanimsaot, who are here, who are found. Okay, so obviously he had other daughters who were not Nimsaot. Pen tisafe, lest let's see what this I think it's gonna say, but Avon Hair, lest you all understood come to an end in the iniquity of this city. So let's take a look. Vaya itsu, right? They urged them, they they pressured them. Ketardumo, ketargumo, just as the Aramaic translation as the Targum says, Vedahiku, they pushed them, right? The Lidchok would or Lidchof, right? So now I think it means to speed up. They they try to speed them up. Sorry, that's dochak, is speed. Maharu, maharu, they caused him to speed up. Yes, David. So how did, but there was an angry crowd outside. How, yeah. how did they survive the night without the angry crowd, like breaking into the house and, and you know, killing them? Right. Or, or so they we, were gonna... Yes. So we need to understand that when the angels struck them with blindness, they weren't able to find a way to get into the house. Okay. So that was okay. So basically, they're still out there, but they can't Correct. see it Correct. pretty much. They okay. can't see where how to get in there. They're trying. So you can imagine it's a very dramatic scene going on here, you know, with Lot trying to defend these people. And interesting, though, that's sort of such an interesting thought, right? And the angel saying, "There's, there's not going to be a defense for these people. They're, they're, this is all coming to an end now." And and Lot wanting to stay, understandably, not wanting to leave. But we'll see. We'll get we'll get into this a little bit more. It's very interesting because the question is, you know. Was Lot worthy of being rescued by the angels? Was was he and his family really worthy of it? So we'll see. Complex question. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Of course. Of course. Okay. So the chiku means they they caused him, they they pushed him to speed up, right? Hanim saot who are found, mezumanot means they were present lacha. They're present for you, babayit in the house, lahat silam, in order to save them. Well, Midrash Agada and Rashi here just says there are other Midrashic interpretations of this phraseology here. 
Yesh, there are there there's midrash agada on this vezei yishuvot shal mikra. But this is the basic meaning of the scripture. So he doesn't tell us what other interpretations there are here. It's possible that when we do Torah Tmima, he may supply some of those for us. We'll see. Okay, so it's in the in the far off future, I suspect. Right, Tispe again, a little bit of an unusual word here. Tiyekala it will come to an end. Kala means an end. Now, it's interesting that kala is also a word that describes a bride. It's exactly the same word that we use for a bride. And I wonder if it means an end to her basically being single and her being now in a place where she and her husband can have children that there's that possibility and that possibly this word kala has that inside of it. I suspect it is related to the verb. Ad tom, in other words, ad tom kol hador, until the end of all the generation, right, we're going to see, metugam is translated as ad desaf kal dara, until the end of of all generations so so in other words so here we have the word uh tom kol hador uh let's take a look yes right okay not sure exactly what the point is he's making here because we want to have uh kala is what we're talking about here is is the word he's discussing so right oh tispe yeah. tispe sorry it's the word tispo and of course the word sof which means end so that's right i'm sorry tie kala so the the word tispe is the word he's working with in other words and kala of course means the end of atom until the end of this this gen all generations it's a phrase elsewhere and he says it's saf and he so the point that rashi's making is that he uses the word saf for tispe okay uh, let's see. Ah, uh, and we have here a uh, ta'amikra. This is a trope note that's called a shalshelet, a shalshelet, which means a train, a, a chain, excuse me, a chain. And it's a, uh, it would be sung as vayit mama. And it's a way of describing the fact that he was delaying. Remember, they were urging him to move on, and he was taking his time, right? He he just couldn't get himself out of there, right? So it describes, this note actually describes the word. And the men took hold of his hand, and the hand of his wife, and the hands of his two daughters. Now, here we go. In the compassion that God had upon him. They took him out. And they set him down outside the city. So let's take a look here. Excuse me. Right? So Rashi says, well, what was he delaying about? And the answer is, he wanted to save his property as well, or his money. Right? Mamon is money, but it can also mean property. But basically, he was trying to save something. And they held him. So, Echad Mehem Hayashaliach so according to Bereshit Rabbah, one of them was the shaliach, was lahatzilo, had been sent the emissary to save him, the chaveiro, and his companion, that is the angel's companion angel, la Sodom. Remember, angels have this strong union, one job at a time, right? So the other one was to overturn Sodom, the city of Sodom. And for this reason, it states, it says singular, right? Third person singular. And he said, escape. And it doesn't say they said, right? 
Okay. It's in the very next verse. Okay. Here we go. Vayhi kehotzi am otam hachutza. And it was such, it was so, that when they were taken out of them, they were taken out, or when he took them out, outside, hachutza, outside of the city. Vayomer, and here's the Vayomer. So it's possible that this Rashi that we just read actually belongs to this verse. He said, Himalet al nafshecha, escape for your lives. We'll see this Himalet Rashi's going to talk about. Al tabit acharecha, do not look behind you. And of course, the question is, why not? Right? And do not remain, do not stand in this entire district. Ahara Himalet Pentisafe. So we got this word Pentisafe again. So he says, escape to the mountain, lest you come to an end, lest you be finished off too. Okay. So Himalet al Namshecha. Flee for your life. So he's, re he's responding, he's saying, well, why were they saying this based on the Vayit Ma'amea that he was delaying? Sorry. It's enough that you save your lives. Don't take pity. In other words, don't, don't worry about your money. Don't don't be sorry that you're not saving your money. It's enough that you're able to save your lives. We've in California we've had some of those experiences, but I suspect they're elsewhere in this country where we've had such experiences. Al tabit acharecha. So do not look behind you. This is really interesting. Okay. Ata hir shata imahem. You were just as wicked with them. You were just as wicked as the people of Sodom. Avraham ata And it's only on the merit of Abraham that you are being rescued. And of course, this is a powerful statement in terms of the, the attempts that we have to live righteously, the effects that it can have on others as well, the positive effects it can have on other people. But this is this is the first time directly we've had such a statement uh, where the tradition is judging Lot and saying he, the fact that he was living amongst them, obviously, and they even have elected him a judge, and apparently he, he could go around the city and look for other members of his family without having to worry about uh, being uh, hurt by these people. Um, he wasn't behaving any differently. And Chaki died. You are not worthy to observe their punishment for Atani Tzol while you are being rescued. You're no better than them. And the only reason this is happening, right, obviously, is because you're Abraham's nephew and God is having compassion on you. Bechol HaKikar, the entire district, the district, the district is Kikar Hayardain the district of the Jordan. Uh, let me make sure I'm going to pronounce this correctly. Uh, here we go. Uh, Hahara. Okay, Hahara. Let's find the place. Sorry, let me find here. Yeah. Hahara, Himalate. Escape to the mountain. Etzel Avraham Barach. So where was he supposed to flee or where was he to flee? And that was to Abraham. He was to flee to Abraham, Shehu Yoshev Bahar, because he was dwelling in the mountain. And how do we know this? Shinemar, because it says back in Genesis 12, 8, Ba'ya'atek Misham Bahara, he moved from that place to the mountain. Ba'achashav, and now too, Sham. He was still dwelling there in the mountain. Shinemar Elamakum Asher Hayasham. Because it mentions in Oh Oholo Bachilats in the verse. So in Genesis 13, this is 12, 8, but in Genesis 13, 3, it mentions how he goes back to the place where his tent had been originally. 
Fafalpi, and despite the fact Shekatuv Yehal Avraham, etc., even though it talks about Abraham uh, tenting and camping uh, up until Hebron, right? Holim Harbe Hayulo, he had many, many tents with Nimshahu at Hebron, and so they spread out up until Hebron. Himalait, what about this word Himalait? Lashun Hashmata. It has the meaning of slipping, slipping away, detaching, releasing. And of course, we know the Shemitah year, the year of release. There we have the word as what it means, right? It's when you no longer had your lands, your lands became ownerless for a year, right? The Chain Kol Imalta Shabamikra. Uh, and he says, similarly, all words like imalta with lamalet, right? Uh, himalet, sh that are in scripture, and the French emise, uh, okay, is in, according to Svarya, is the uh, medieval French word, and the Yiddish word is enschliefen, which means to slip away, right? The laws in French, right? And or Yiddish, the chain, and he gives examples elsewhere. The himlita zachar, right? In other words, this is a verse in Isaiah chapter sixty-six, which it says basically she gave birth to a male. She nishmat ha'ubar. That is because uh, the fetus has detached itself, slipped away min harechem from the womb. And likewise, in Psalm 124, Ketzipur Nimlata, like a bird escaped, essentially, right? That's had a chance to um, be released or to slip away. I think essentially it means like escaping. And Isaiah 46, the lo yachlu malet masa, and they were not able to release the burden. And he explains la hashmit masa harei, that is to um, be able to release the burden of excrement shenif shebenik vehem that were 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 in their loins, right? That were in the intestines. And to stop right here at this. This point. is a reminder. Okay, it's okay. It's don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Finish this. Here. Just Here. let me know Here. you're done. Dispute. Otherwise, okay. I'll remind you in an hour. Right. It's fine. That's okay. All right. So we're at verse 18. That's where we'll go. This is a reminder mm -hmm. to take my medication. If you finish this, just let me know you're done. Otherwise, I'll remind you in an hour. Okay. <laughs> I guess we have little Easter eggs in these in these sessions. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll stop here. I'm gonna stop the poll, stop the share. And okay. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, yes. I have a question, Rabbi. Sure, sure Arlen. Um the way I see it, uh when the uh men uh, uh, of uh, uh uh were there uh at the door. Yes. Okay. Um, they brushed against a uh, uh, lot, and they they were trying to open the door, but the trouble is, Lot says, "I'll give you my daughter." Well, he was sinning right then. He sinned. Um, you know, don't give people your daughter to use. Uh, he had three angels in the house. They were going to help him. He Two didn't angels. Have to his daughter. <laughs> then the angels uh, 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 put a great big light. So brightly that yeah. the, the people in the town couldn't see the door. Is this something and that it, you read then? Because it's not it, there in the text. It doesn't say. What I think. Anyway, it's my thought. All right, that's uh, okay. Then he said to, uh, then he said to the, uh, um, uh, he, he said to Lot, "Let's go." And and Lot's wife said, "No, we've got uh, we've got our our uh, in laws." In this town, I see and the in laws are going. The in laws said, No, we're not gonna go. That's a false thing. That's false. They're not gonna do anything. And 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 Lot says, I don't want to go. My relatives are there, they'll be dead. 
and and the angel said, "You got to go if you want to save your life." Yes. So he went. He, they pushed him out, and and his wife didn't want to go, and they finally went. And then he said, "Go to the hills." The angel said, "Go to the hills." And he said, "No, by the time I get to the hills, the the right. destruction you're, will be so you're great. You're anticipating it'll tomorrow. Take me. It'll yes. take me." So they said, well, "There's a town there called Zor. Go over there. I, I will go over there to that town." Uh, and, and the angel said, "We won't destroy that town." You Arlen, can say, Arlen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> that, We're, getting We're getting Spoiler there. We're getting there. Be wrong. Be wrong. Okay. All right, so you you have your own midrash uh, as part yeah. of this too. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you.